A history of the Ursuline Sisters of Mount St. Joseph must begin with a 16th century Italian woman named St. Angela Marisi. Italy in the 16th century offered women little chance to achieve any leadership or authority in their lives, nor could they live their spirituality in the world. Then Angela Marisi came along and opened new doors to the women of her time and today. Angela was born in 1474 in a northern Italian city of Desenzano, along Lake Garda, about halfway between Milan and Venice. Italy was in constant turmoil during these changing and unstable times of the Renaissance. Women of St. Angela's Day had only two reputable choices, becoming a bride of Christ and entering a cloistered religious community, or getting married. St. Angela offered a third way to live. Angela's goal was to elevate the family life through the Christian education of future wives and mothers. Ursulines were the first teaching order of women religious. Angela taught her companions to be consecrated to God and to be dedicated to the service of their neighbor while remaining in the world, teaching the girls of their own neighborhood and practicing a religious form of life in their own homes. They wore no special habit or dress and did not have formal religious vows. Angela's beginnings were humble. In 1476, Angela's family moved to the farm where she grew up. Her father read to his children about the lives of the saints, which made quite an impression on young Angela. While yet a teenager, Angela's parents and her sister died. She and her younger brother moved to her mother's hometown to stay with her uncle and aunt. During this time, Angela had a vision of a procession of singing angels and young girls, including her deceased sister, this assured her that her sister was safe in heaven with the saints. Angela joined the Third Order of St. Francis in 1494, founded by Francis of Assisi for lay people who wished to dedicate themselves to a life of service to God. Angela's aunt and uncle had hoped she would marry but when she told them her life was devoted to God, they agreed that she could move back to Desenzano, where she had inherited a vineyard. During the olive harvest, young girls climbed ladders, leaning against the trees to shake the olives loose. One day in a grove of olive trees, Angela had a second vision of several virgins climbing a ladder to heaven. This was God's way of showing her that she was to help women live a life that would lead them to heaven. It planted the seed for her to found the company of St. Ursula. In 1516, at the request of the Franciscans, Angela moved to Brescia, Italy, to live with Catherine, her friend, who was grieving the loss of her husband and three children. The next year, 
Angela moved to the home of Antonio Romano in the center of Brescia. She spent much time with visitors there who sought her wisdom and advice. In the following decade, Angela encouraged lay men and women who were engaged in charitable works. She realized she was meant to do God's work in Brescia. Three years later, Angela made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, but went blind. She continued her journey, and her sight was restored at the crucifix on her own journey home. Angela made a pilgrimage to Rome in 1525 and had an audience with Pope Clement VII. He invited her to stay there in Rome to help with charitable works, but she knew her call was in Brescia. In 1531, Angela assembled the first 12 young women. And the next year, she moved to a room near her parish of St. Aphra in Brescia. On November 25th, 1535, 40 years after her vision, Angela joined with 28 women to found the Company of St. Ursula, named after a 4th century martyr who is the patron saint of Catholic education. It was the feast of St. Catherine of Alexandria, her mother's patron saint. The women attended Mass at St. Aphra and signed the Book of the Company. In 1536, Angela dictated the rule for her new company. Angela's rule offers guidance on how to live a life devoted to God and continues to encourage her daughters today. The prologue says, Therefore, my sisters, I exhort you, or rather I beg you and entreat you all, that having been chosen to be the true and virginal spouse of the Son of God, you be willing, first of all, to recognize what such a thing implies and what a new and astonishing dignity it is. On March 18, 1537, the first general chapter meeting took place for this company of St. Ursula. Angela was elected Mother Superior for life. Just two years later, Angela fell ill. She dictated the legacies and counsels before she died in Brescia on January 27, 1540, while still yet in her 60s. At her request, she was laid to rest in the crypt of St. Aphra, near the burial site of many early Christian martyrs. Today, Ursuline sisters do not consider Angela merely a historic figure. They continue to quote from her legacies and counsels and to seek the direction she promises would come. The councils were directed to the leaders of the community that would follow her, detailing how to care for the sisters in that community. The introduction of the councils contains Angela's perhaps most quoted advice. Have hope and firm faith in God, for he will help you in everything Act, move, believe, strive, hope, cry out to him with all your heart, 
for without doubt you will see marvelous things if you direct everything to the praise and glory of his majesty and the good of souls. Her last counsel implored her sisters that you live in harmony, united together all of one heart and one will, be bound to one another by the bond of charity, esteeming each other, helping each other, bearing with each other in Jesus Christ. She assured them, I shall always be in your midst, helping your prayers. Perhaps the most radical idea of Angela Marisi comes in her last legacy. And if, according to times and circumstances, the need arises to make new rules or do something differently, do it prudently and with good advice, and let your principal recourse be to gather at the feet of Jesus Christ. And there, all of you, with all your daughters, to offer most fervent prayers. For in this way, without doubt, Jesus Christ will be in your midst. And as a true and good master, he will enlighten and teach you what you have to do. The rules of religious communities in the 16th century were practically written in stone. However, Angela's words encouraged making new rules if the time and circumstances called for them, an astonishing statement at the time. On June 9, 1544, four years after Angela's death, Pope Paul III formally approved the company of St. Ursula. Angela Marisi was canonized in 1807 by Pope Pius VII. Her feast day is January 27th, the anniversary of her death. She is the patron saint of the sick, the disabled, the physically challenged, and those grieving parents. When the Church of St. Aphra was nearly destroyed during World War II, a new church was built on that spot and named for St. Angela. Her incorrupt body is on display there. What today's Ursuline sister tries to replicate of St. Angela is her spirit of hospitality, kindness, and an openness to all. 